Hey guys, in this video we're just going to take a look at scatter plots, correlation coefficients, and linear regressions. To start off, we're looking at a scatter plot, which is just a graph of plotted points that shows a relationship between two sets of data. You should notice that in this scatter plot, we're comparing scores on their final exam and hours spent studying to see if we see any type of relationship between the two. You should notice that this graph is composed of dots or different points, but they are not connected. With a scatter plot, we do not connect the points. But you should notice how the data in the graph resembles a straight line. So all these points kind of look like they're forming a straight line as you read from left to right. When working with scatter plots, it is often useful to represent the data with the equation of a straight line which is called the line of best fit or your trend line. So by inputting a line here, we're creating a trend line or a line of best fit. When we're doing it by hand, um, you're going to notice that it might be slightly off from your line to the next line because we are just estimating. And we do want a good amount of points above that line and a good amount of points below that line. Fortunately, the best way to get the linear regression is using our calculator like we have done in the past with L1, L2, stat, cap, stat calc 4. That's kind of why when we created those linear regressions like we did in the previous unit, some of you would say, how come my y-intercept, this point on the y-axis, doesn't match up with the one in the table and the one that my equation is giving me because a linear regression is just a line of best fit. It is an estimation. Now we're just gonna look at the vocabulary that's on your worksheet. So bivariate data is just data that involves two variables, so two things that you're comparing. The scatter plot we just talked about, line of best fit we just talked about. Correlation coefficient is a new idea now. So a correlation coefficient describes how closely the points in a scatter plot cluster around the line of best fit. So we describe our correlation coefficient with the letter R, and our correlation coefficient has to be between negative one and one, where negative one is the strongest, absolute strongest negative relationship, while positive one is the absolute strongest positive relationship. So a positive correlation shows that two sets have a positive correlation if both sets of data values increases. So as one increases, so does the other. A negative correlation is two data sets that have a negative correlation if one set of data increases as the other set decreases. And no correlation is just two data sets that have no correlation which means there's no relationship between the two sets of values. So in your graphs below, it just shows you three different scatter plots and shows you the type of correlation. So for here, no correlation, you're going to see that your dots or plots are scattered all over the place, while positive correlation looks like it's increasing as we read left to right. With negative correlation, it decreases as we read left to right. So on this number line below, we're just going to go over the strengths of the relationship and use our correlation coefficient. So if we see something like negative one, we say that's a strong negative correlation coefficient or a strong negative relationship. Something else that could be considered strong is anywhere like 0 0.8, 0 0.9s in the negative direction. Moderate is typically around the halfway mark. So we would see like negative 0.5, negative 0.6. Weak, more like negative 0.2s and negative 0.3s. Zero, this would be no correlation. It's scattered all over the place. For a weak positive, same thing, but positive version. So like 0 0.2, 0 0.3, moderate is more like 0 0.5, 0 0.6-ish. And then the strongs would be more of those 0.8s to 0.9s. And then one is absolutely perfectly straight, which we typically don't see. 
For this next question, it says, what is the correlation coefficient of the linear fit of the data shown below to the nearest hundredth? So as we read from left to right, we should notice that all our dots are trending downward, which means we're going to have a negative correlation. It can't be one or two because they're both positive numbers. And if we look at the dots, they do not form a perfectly straight line because so it can't be negative one. Therefore, the best answer would be choice three. For the second one, um, for here we want to figure out again which of the R values most likely represents the correlation between the two variables. So as we read left to right, we're going to notice that our lines go up or our points form a line that would be going up. So it can't be four because that's negative. It can't be three because it's not a perfectly straight line. So now we're between choice one and two. Do you see how all those dots are fairly close to each other? So that's going to be a strong relationship. And the closer you are to one, the stronger you are. So it has to be 0.88. Exercise three says, which of the following scatter plots would have a correlation coefficient closest to negative one? So as we read left to right, we should notice that our trends of the dots are going up. Can't be one because that would be positive. Three is kind of all over the place in the middle. So that looks more of a no correlation or very, very weak positive because it looks like it's going slightly up. So we want our dots or our trends to go in the negative direction, which leaves us between two and four. But the closer you are to negative one, the more perfect of a straight line going down would be. So here it is a little more spread out, but choice four, they are kind of close together. So the best one would be choice four. And then something else that we need to look at and kind of get familiar with is this phrase right here. Correlation does not mean causation. So because something has a really strong relationship, whether it be positive or negative, does not mean it caused one or the other. So the first event that they give you is related to the cause, while the second event that they give you is related to the effect. So we're just going to look at some quick examples that are not on your worksheet, but will help you for the topic of understanding correlation relationships. So we're going to decide whether it's causal or not. Causal just means it follows a cause and effect. That makes sense. So the more you print pages from the printer, the less ink you will have. That is a true statement. It is proven that the more you do print, the less ink you will have. The second one says the faster a student types a research paper, the more pages the research paper will have. That's not necessarily true because I could type it really quickly, but only do one page and someone else could type extremely quickly, but they'll have more pages to their research paper. So not causal. The more miles you drive, the less gas you have. This is absolutely true. And you will notice that when you start driving, the more and more you drive, your gas will go down. The higher the volume on the radio, the louder the sound. That is true, so it's causal. And then the more anxiety you have about a test, the worse you will do. That's not necessarily true. It can have a strong correlation, a strong relationship between the two, but not necessarily make one be a cause and effect. So just because I have a lot of anxiety about a test doesn't necessarily mean I will do worse than the other person with no anxiety. The last topic that we're going to look at is linear regressions and calculating the line of best fit, which you do have some practice with already. So linear regressions is our L1, L2, stat calc four. Although today is nothing new in terms of linear regressions, tomorrow's video, you will notice that we have to do one extra step based off of the problem that's given if they want us to find our correlation coefficient. In today's worksheet, we're not looking at that yet. So we're going to go to our calculator and hit stat, edit, 
So now we're back to two columns in L1 and L2 because we have two pieces of information, two different data points, our bivariate data. So L1, we put all our X values, L2 is our Y values, and then we hit stat calc four. And then this is the equation that we're going to create for part one. So part one says Randall your values to the nearest tenth. So we have y equals negative 0.7x plus 7.3. The next question said, would this be a positive or negative correlation? We should see that we have a negative slope. So it will be a negative correlation as the lapse time increases our remaining drugs decreases. The next part, determine the amount of the drug, so we don't know why if we're trying to find it, if we know that the hours, or the t or the x times is six. So for here, we're just gonna go y equals negative 0.7, substitute in a six for the hours, and then when we type that into our calculator, we'll have about 3.1 milligrams. And then the last part says determine to the nearest tenth of an hour. So the hour we don't know, that's what we're looking for. When there will no longer be a drug in our body. So when there's no longer any more, that's zero. So we're gonna replace our Y value with zero and we're going to solve for x, so subtract the 7.3. So negative 7.3 equals negative 0.7x, divide by negative 0.7, and we get x equals 10.4. This question was a little tricky because it wants us to find the answer to the nearest minute now. So 10.4 was our hours, and then now to the nearest minute. This 0.4 we need to convert to minutes. So there are 60 minutes in an hour, so 60 times 0.4. When I type that in, we get 24. So this is 10 hours and 24 minutes. So we need to figure out how many minutes or in 10 hours, so 10 times 60 is 600 minutes plus our 24 minutes. That is a total of 624 minutes. All right, see you later, thanks.